Um, first, thank you everybody for showing up and um, talk about the test surveys and pools. For those that didn't know, well, Blackboard offers you the options to create test surveys and then deploy them in the course area. When you add a test or a survey to a content area, it's called deployed in Blackboard. So what we're going to do today is going to see how to deploy a test, how to create a test and how to deploy it. Uh, it will be exactly the same process for a survey. And then we will go into a, a live demonstration where I will do the same, the same thing and uh, then I will proceed to create a pool. <clears throat> so those are the topics. I'm going to set up the test. I'm going to show you in, in the PowerPoint. Then I'm going to do a live demo where I will set up a test, and then I, I will set up the test pool. Okay, so first thing is on the control panel in your Blackboard page for your course, uh, you expand the course tools, and then you click on the test surveys and pools. This will take you to the test surveys and pool page, and you select the option test. Once you get to that page, you will click on where it says build test, and this will take you to the test information. The first is to enter the name of the test, and if you have uh, some information to put, you can put a description of the test and some instructions for the students for them to know. Now, um, once you have created that, you don't have the, uh, the option to create the questions for your test. Uh, so this is where you would go. You create create question, and you will see a list of all the types of questions that you have available for your test. Now, depending on what type of uh, question you have selected, you will have a different type of screen, and we will see that in the live demonstration. Uh, but one of the first one will be to create the question title and then the question text. Uh, the question title that put here is not mandatory, uh, but the question test is. So you put the question test, and then depending on what type, you, you have different options at the bottom. We'll see that during the demonstration. Once you have created the questions, you can either go back to create question and select another type, or you can select the plus here on right under the questions. And if you have several questions in between each question, you have the plus. And this is where you will be adding the new question. So let's go ahead and start the live demo. Okay, is it okay for everybody? Can I get a check mark? Oops. Can everybody see this okay? Okay, thank you. Okay, so like I was explaining earlier, the first thing would be to go to the course tools. Expand my course tools. Okay, what's going on? Uh, maybe the screen is too big. Okay. Okay, hold on one second. Let me stop the sharing for a second and let's put it again because apparently my course tool is not showing up. I'll be right back in. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Sorry about that. I apologize. It'll be just one little second.
I'm going to go ahead and take it over to um, the whiteboard so it'll be easier for you to get back into start sharing. And okay, I'm ready. I'm going to go ahead and share the application again. Okay. Sorry about that. Everybody can see the whiteboard. No, I'm sorry, the screen of my blackboard. Okay. Thank you. All right, so this, those are the course tools. And I just click on test surveys and polls, and this will take me to the next page. Click test. And I'm going to go ahead and build a test. So I'm going to call it uh, uh, final exam. I can go ahead and put some instructions here, a description of what it is, and some instructions for the students. I'm going to leave it blank for the moment. Submit. And I'm going to go ahead and create the questions. So the first one I'm going to choose will be um, multiple choice. And this is the screen for create, edit, multiple choice questions. So this question, I'm going to do it blank. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and type the text for the question. And let's say, for example, what is your favorite day of the of the week? Simple question. Now here I have the option answering numbering. I can pick numbers, Roman letters, uppercase or lowercase. In this case, I'm going to pick lowercase letter, and then the orientation. I'm going to do the default. If I want to allow partial credit, let's say a student gave the wrong answer, but it could be considered as a right answer, I can select to, to allow partial credit. And then the answers will be shown in a random order. Now, the first thing that I want to put is the day. I'm going to say Saturday. Jumping to the next one. At here, as you can see, those are the number of questions, the number of answers that will be available for the student. The next one, I'm going to put Sunday. Monday. And let's put Wednesday. Now, because I allowed partial credit, each, each answer will come with this option over here, partial credit percentage, and then I can select which percentage I want. Like, for example, my, my right answer would be, let's say, Saturday. That's the right answer that I want to answer. But Sunday would be considered as a partial credit because it, it might not be a completely wrong answer if I answer that. So I'm going to say, 75% for this in case the students answer that question. And I'm going to click Submit. Now I have the question, and I'll be ready to, uh, to create the new questions. So, and like I was showing you earlier, you have the plus here where you can add the question. And if I have multiple questions, the plus here indicates that the question will be created between the two questions. Okay. And here I have my test. It's just going to be just one question. Click OK. If I want to deploy this test into Blackboard, I'll have to go to an area that I have created, a content area in this case. And I'm going to go ahead and build an assessment. Go to assessment create the test, and here I will have a list of all the tests that I have available. And this is the one that I just created. I'm going to select this, or I can go ahead and create a new test from scratch if I haven't done it already, and click Submit. Now I'm going to have the test options available to me. 
and this is what they are. Make open the test in the new window. If I want this test to be open in a new window besides the one that I'm already running, I put yes. Make the test available. Does that mean does the students have the access to it? Yes. If I want to add a new announcement for this test so the students are aware that it's available, I can put yes, and then I can put an announcement. Let's leave it as no for the moment. Now the attempts. Multiple attempts. Do I want the students to be able to take, to take the test multiple times? If I select that, I have the option to allow unlimited attempts, which means that they can take the test as many times as they want, or allow a number of attempts. So let's say two. And the scores that the students will see will be the last attempt that is graded. Next is forced completion. What is this? That means that the students will have to finish the test. If they don't finish the test, uh, they will not, get, uh, for example, if they close the window before the test finishes, they will not uh, get credit for, they will not get the points. So th they have to complete, force the completion, and they will not be able to retake it. And the next one is set a timer. If I click set the timer, I can go ahead and say 60 minutes. This is the time that they're allowed to take this test. And in addition, I have the auto submit option. If I select yes, once the timer runs out of time, the test will be auto submitted and the students will, will not have the option to finish it if, they, if they're not done by then. Then the date restrictions. Um, this is pretty much what we see in every other information that we have in Blackboard. When do you want the test to be available to the students? Display after the specific date and time and display until. So during that time, this is only the time that they will be able to see the test and take it. Do you want the students to have to enter a password to take the test? Select here if you want that to happen. Now, test availability options. You can select which user can have access to the test at different times. So let's say a student might not be able to come to class for medical emergency or for whatever reason, they will not be able to come or take the test at the time that you have determined. You can select here when they can take it. So add a user or a group, you have the option to locate the student this test with my SpongeBob student. And here, I can set up how many attempts they can take, the time, and then when is the test going to be available for them, okay? So I don't need this because my test is available all the time, but you, you get the idea. The due date, this is to let them know when is the test due for them. Um, note this is important because it will show in their my grades as an upcoming um, exam and it will be, uh, if you put due dates for all of them, they will be sorted in the, in the chronological order. So that, that would be a, a benefit for them. They can see when it's uh, coming. And if the test is past due and you select do not allow the students to start the test if the due date has passed, the students will not be able to take the test anymore. Okay, so let's jump now to the show test results and feedback to students. You can select what the students can see once they have taken the test. So after submission, you can select them to see the score. You can have them see all the answers that they gave, the correct ones and the submitted ones. If you have some feedback, you can select to see it. Or if you want them to see the incorrect questions, you can also select that. More settings for the test, it's the test presentation. If you select all at once, all the questions will be shown to the students at once. So they can go from the first to the last questions at a glance by just moving the cursor on the browser or you can select them to, to be able to see them one at a time, which means one question will be visible to them and they will have to click the next 
to move on to the next question. If you want to prohibit bad tracking, you also can do that, which basically once they have moved up to the next question, they will not be allowed to come back to the prior one. And then you have randomized the questions. Uh, this is sometimes if you have two sitting next to each other, if you randomize the questions, they will not have the same uh, questions um, in the same order. So a student question five could be one type of question, and for the other student, the question five could be a completely different question. That is if you randomize the questions. And then click submit. And now the test, the final exam, is available to the students to take. Questions on this part, or shall we continue? Thank you. OK. Now, I, I didn't go through the process to the survey, because the survey is exactly the same process as the test. Uh, the, the only difference between the survey and the test is first that the survey is anonymous. So if you want results that you want to be able to determine who gave you some answers, the survey is not a good option. It's better to do the test. Uh, but if you want something completely anonymous, the survey will be perfect. Then the second thing is that the survey will not be graded. You will not be entering points for the questions in the survey. Uh, for the test, you will. Okay, so let's go back to uh, test surveys and pools, and then uh, let's go ahead and build a pool. So this is if you want to reuse questions out of future time. Just go to build pool, create the name of the pool. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, call it final pool. Just not being very creative. And submit. Now I can go ahead here and select my questions for the pool. Uh, just like the regular test, I, I would be adding them. Or I can go ahead and find questions from prior exams or tests that I had before in the past and select which one I want to add. So I can go ahead and select those, and I will be adding the questions from prior pools. Let's say here. Here, I'm adding those questions, submit. Okay. It looks like it's having a little problem to do that, uh, but, uh, oh, sorry about that. It's a perfect occasion for me to talk about this. There's a bug right now with uh, Firefox and um, Chrome, Chrome and Explorer that do not allow you to uh, add questions from the pool. This will be fixed uh, in a patch that will be uh, created not in, in the, the near future, uh, hopefully this week. Uh, but once it is fixed and patched, you will be able to select the questions, put them, put a check mark on them, and then submit. Those questions will be added to the pool. Or you can go ahead and upload questions that you have from a prior uh, let's say from a prior test that you have imported, you can upload from here. And that's it for the test surveys and pools. Let me go ahead and close this and stop the sharing. And let's go back to the to the content. Is there any questions from anybody? No? Thank you. Well, I'm going to pass it on to Michael now.